Hello, and welcome to Cheetah TV. My name is Brian Badger from the Cheetah Conservation Fund. Now, as we continue to show you all the ins and outs of uh, holistic conservation on the front line in Namibia and Somaliland and around the world, well, today we're going to focus on the ecology, the study of the land, the study of the habitat, the animals, the fauna and flora, everything that happens in the ecosystem. That's what the ecology team are interested in. And today I got the opportunity to speak to Stan, who's an ecologist here at CCF in Namibia, to talk a little bit about the ever-changing technology that enables CCF to study um, the cheetah, the leopards, all the, the carnivores and uh, different species within that ecosystem. Now, if you like the video, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. It really does help us grow. So let's nip across to the other side of campus and catch up with Stan. Okay, so I'm here at uh, CCF Centre just outside the uh, town of Ochivarongo in central Namibia. And I'm here with Stan, who's uh, uh, an ecologist with the Cheetah Conservation Fund. So hi Stan, and thanks very much for joining us. Yes, hi Brian. <laughs> now with the ecology side, um, you know, I think that the, the basis of a lot of your studies are camera traps, is that right? Yes, that's right. Uh, we actually work quite a lot with camera traps. So camera traps are these motion activated devices uh, that get triggered when there is movement uh, of an animal. Uh, and it gives us quite a nice idea what's happening out in the wild without us being there. So we can get an idea about um, the biodiversity, which species are present, also about their activity patterns, the drivers of their distribution and so on. So when we're talking about camera traps, you may know them as, as trail cameras, but they're all the same thing. And um, over the last kind of 20 years or so, probably even less than that, the, the camera traps have gone through quite an evolution, would you say? Right, right. Uh, we used to work like with very robust types of models, um, even analog kind of camera traps where they, developed, they had to develop the films. But then over the years, they got way compacter, the battery life uh, increased. And there are even now camera traps that can be remotely monitored. So it's, it's really, really nice to see how technology develops and yeah, assists yeah. us. Yeah. So even with the older ones, they didn't have infrared. So, you know, they, uh, the only way that they could capture images would be with a flash. Right. And, and the white flash, it gives us quite nice images at night. Uh, but the problem is that with that is that it might scare away the animal. Uh, so we prefer using um, infrared camera traps at night, um, so when the trigger goes off it doesn't bright up and it doesn't scare away the animal. So you said that the original ones were analogue with a, with a roll-on film that you had to get developed. So you would get kind of 36 images maybe? All right, right. Yeah. So now we're using um, SD cards. Um, so how many images would you expect to, uh, to have on, a, on an active camera? So if we leave up the cameras for about a month, and there's quite a bit of wildlife activity, um, for example at the waterhole, we could easily reach 10,000 images. 10,000. Yeah. yeah. So that's a little bit more than 36. So, um, but uh, that's when another um, chain of work comes into place because the camera trap is kind of working remotely. You don't really have to do anything apart from wait. And then you go out and you get the, the SD card. So what happens next? Yeah, then our work actually starts. Um, so we're collecting like thousands of images. Um, the first step of the data processing um, is actually yeah, backing up the images, putting them on your computer on a hard drive. Um, and then we would start filtering out the empty images because quite a lot of times when there's a bit of wind, the vegetation will move and uh, it will trigger the camera trap. Um, so that's the first step. Second one is then um, once we filtered out empty images to classify the images with animals to species. So we know which species we have a which camera trap. And then a third step would be to, to classify at least for the species of interest, uh, such as cheetah but also leopard, uh, to, to also see which individuals we have. And cheetahs, leopards, they have this unique spot pattern. Uh, so we can use it as a fingerprint to compare the patterns of different individuals and then we can see okay this is individual A, it's individual B. Uh, so yeah, it's a whole process and it's quite labor intensive, a lot of time, uh, a lot of effort uh, and we're actually looking now in, into technologies that can assist 
um, this whole process. Yeah. So it's not just the evolution of the of the camera itself um, and the SD cards and everything else that goes with it, and even the battery life. Um, it's also the software that you, you you that you use to to streamline and make it more efficient. So tell us a bit about the the the, the next step as far as the CCF Ecology team and what software you're using. Right. So currently we're working together with. Um, Tech for Conservation, that's uh, an organization that actually develops different softwares to assist conservation organizations such as CCF mm -hmm. in their work in their mission to save mm -hmm. uh, and to protect biodiversity. And Tech for Conservation, they developed uh, a computer-based platform which is called um, the African Carnival Wild Book. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, an algorithm that is based on artificial intelligence pattern recognition mm -hmm. and that allows to load in different uh, images of cheetahs and it will um, compare different images based on their spot pattern and it will give suggestions about which individual might match to uh, the images you collect from, from different camera traps. That's great. So, you know, when you're, when you're, whenever I'm talking to, to people um, in different departments around CCF, there's always a level of collaboration. And I'm, uh, and, I, and I'm absolutely positive that, that the ecology team is, is no different to that. So when you go out and, or you find interesting images um, on your camera traps, what would be the next process for you? Who would you involve next? Right. Um, as you say, we have close collaborations with all departments. But for example, when we see cheetahs out on the camera traps, uh, we will always immediately inform the scat detection dog team. Um, they will go out with the dog uh, to search the area, especially around marking sites, uh, to find SCAT. And then SCAT is of, uh, yeah, very valuable to the genetics teams because then they can do a lot of, uh, lot of yeah, analysis on it. So it's a whole cascade of, of interactions yeah. and yeah. collaborations. And, and I'm sure it works the other way as well. Definitely. So if the yeah. SCAT team are out, then and, and they they find scat, then they may suggest to you, you know, this may be a good place for a camera. Right, trap. right. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, actually currently we we, we are testing um, by looking at which methodology uh, works best for which purpose and how different method methodologies complement each other. Mm -hmm. So actually now a bit more in eastern Namibia, we having quite a large scale project where we deploy lots of camera traps. Uh, we survey the area with the scat detection dog and then we see um, how we can develop like an optimized strategy of detecting cheetahs in the area, which mm -hmm. is in the end all about. Yeah, you bring up an interesting point because when you when you think about research, sometimes you you kind of look, you know, you're thinking about looking out and and searching, and and sometimes the research is within. You know, you're you're looking for the best, as you said, methodology. You know, the best systems to make you more efficient to get more information to create right. solutions or whatever. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Like we're quite often a bit limited in the resources, and time, and effort, and the people we have. Mm -hmm. So if we can like increase our own efficiency. I think that uh, makes it only like, like yeah, more, more effective. That's great. Well, Stan, I know how busy you are because you've got thousands of images to go through right. and even <laughs> with the, uh, the software helping you right. out, I know it's still a big task. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, good luck to you in, in, in all you're doing out in CCF East and the, in the communal lands and uh, thanks for all you do. Thank you. Pleasure. So to find out more about CCF and our centre here in Namibia or up in Somaliland or around the world, please visit our website at cheetah.org. There you can find ways that you can visit us, that you can help us, that you can sponsor us and how we, you can help us keep the wild truly wild.